today I'm going to read to you a book called Shoemaker Martin by Leo Tolstoy. When you get older, you'll learn that Leo Tolstoy wrote Anna Karenina and some other wonderful books. But today I'm going to read to you from Shoemaker Martin, which is based on our gospel lesson for today, which was Matthew 25. In a small town in Russia, there once lived a man called Martin, who earned his living mending shoes. He lived and worked in a basement room. Through the window, all he could see of people passing by were their legs, but he still recognized most of them as there was exact, the, as there was scarcely a pair of boots or shoes in town that he did not mend at one time or another. Martin worked all day until it became too dark for him to see his work. Then he would make a pot of tea, light the lamp, and take down his big Bible from the shelf. He read many pages, and the more he read, the happier he felt. One winter evening, he went on reading till it was very late, and he reached the story of the rich man who invited Jesus into his home. Martin thought hard. If Jesus comes to visit me, what would I say? What would I do? How would I welcome him? Still thinking about this, Martin fell asleep. Martin, called a voice suddenly. Martin woke up, but no one was there. Then he heard the voice again. It said, make sure you watch the street tomorrow because I shall be coming. Martin sat up and rubbed his eyes. Had he really heard those words or was it just a dream? He looked carefully around the room, but saw nobody. He turned out the lamp and soon went back to sleep. The next morning, Martin got up very early before dawn. He lit the stove and put the kettle of water on it. As he ate his breakfast, he looked out of the window, wondering whether it had been a dream last night or whether he really would see some unfamiliar shoes belonging to a very special stranger. Still pondering, he set to work. Just as he was cutting a piece, on leather, a piece of leather, Martin heard footsteps outside. He looked up but saw only poor old Stefan, the street sweeper. Stefan was stamping his feet and blowing into his freezing hands in an effort to get warm. Quickly, Martin opened the window and called, come in Stefan and warm up a bit. The kettle's just boiling. Stefan staggered in. Don't bother to wipe your feet. Sit down by the stove. Stefan sipped the hot tea that Martin gave him. And when he felt warm again, he thanked Martin gratefully before leaving. Don't mention it. Come anytime, replied Martin. Martin drank a cup of tea himself, then made some cabbage soup for later. When next he looked out of the window, he saw a young woman standing huddled out in the bad weather with a baby in her arms. She was trying to wrap with the baby to shelter it from the cold wind, but she scarcely had anything to wrap it in except her thin, shabby dress. Martin went up to the door and called her in. He gave her some of his hot soup and brought his old coat to put around her shoulders. It was big enough to protect her and the baby. Afterward, he played with the baby and made it laugh. Finally, Martin fetched some money from an old trunk and gave it to the mother to buy milk. The poor woman bowed and thanked Martin most gratefully before she left, feeling much better. Martin finished off the soup and cleared away the dishes. Later, as he sat at work again, a shadow fell across the window, and Martin looked up eagerly, but it was just townsfolk passing. Some of them he knew and some he didn't, but nobody in particular caught his attention or seemed like a special visitor. All at once, he heard shouting outside on the street. A market woman was dragging along a poorly dressed boy who had stolen one of her apples. She tugged him by his hair, and the boy pr protested and struggled to get away. Martin hurried out and separated them. Let him go, grandmother, he begged. He won't do it again. If we punish someone so harshly for taking an apple, what punishments would we expect for our sins that are far, far worse? The boy and the woman looked at Martin and then looked at each other. Quietly, the boy asked the old woman to forgive him and offered to carry her basket along the road. 
Martin wanted to finish stitching one of the boots that he had to be delivered tomorrow. Soon it was dark. The lamp lighter passed by, lighting the street lamps. Martin finished the boot. Then he put his tools away and swept up the scraps of leather from the floor. He took down his lamp from the nail on the wall and placed it on the table so he could read once again the passage from the Bible that had been so much on his mind since last night. Suddenly, he had the feeling that somebody was moving behind him. He looked around, and this time it really seemed there were some people in the room, but Martin could not make out who they were. Then the voice whispered in his ear, Martin, didn't you recognize me? Who? Me. And out of the shadow stepped Stefan, smiling. This was me too, the voice said again, and the woman with the baby came forward. She smiled and the baby laughed. And this was me as well, the voice said, and the old woman appeared together with the boy who had taken the apple. Both of them were smiling. Martin looked at them all in amazement, and then each of them vanished. Then the shoemaker realized that his dream had come true after all. Jesus really had visited him that day, and he, Martin, had taken him in. Martin was overcome with joy. He began reading from the Bible where it had fallen open. It was a different page from the one he had read last night. At the top on the page he read, And as much as you have done it unto the least of these brethren, you have done it unto me. So the gospel message today was in Matthew, and it talks about how when you do it, when you give back to other people, when you give things and look to people in need and help take care of them, then you're doing those things for Jesus. Happy Thanksgiving. I miss seeing you. Hope you're well.